Can, yeah. can you say a little bit about um, uh, Quest naming structure uh, of our models when we talk about a Quest 506 or an 876? Sure, so uh, this machine again is the uh, Quest 335. Uh, so you want to look at the, the last number in line, uh, the suffix. So uh, this is part of the 5 series. It's the highest part of the 5 series, the, the high end. So we've got the 105, 155, 165, 205, 225, and now the 335. So those are all called the, the 5 series. Those are the 5 series. These are uh, really the, uh, the central part of our lineup. Uh, it's um, uh, our, our most uh, popular uh, by volume, number of units sold. Uh, it's also probably the largest part of the uh, the market that's being addressed uh, with standalone deunification. Certainly stretches from from hobbyist to commercial um, uh, out of that group of uh, certainly. Uh, you also have our 10 series, uh, which today is comprised of the uh, Quest 110, uh, the Quest 150, and the Quest 70. Uh, these are uh, more entry level machines. Uh, they're a little smaller in scale. These are better for uh, hobbyists uh, and then up to someone moving into more of a semi-pro kind of an application. Uh, and then finally, our six series. Uh, it's the high end of our, our, our model line for the capacities. Uh, they use the multi-coil structures and uh, these get into the 506, 876, and then uh, some future models where uh, we're looking to expand the number of, uh, the uh, amount of water that we can draw from the air in a day. So some of those things, uh, five series, 10 series, six series, I mean, that helps uh, people understand, uh, you know, what product grouping we might be talking about. Um, that number also correlates to a capacity of a piece of equipment. Can you just uh, sure. give us a little bit about how that's measured? Uh, the 10 series is gonna be on the smaller end. As I mentioned, it's the 70, the 110, and the 150. That is the number of pints of water that we can pull from the air in a day uh, at the conditions of 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 60% humidity. Uh, it's an industry standard, so that's what we cite when we talk about the naming convention. Uh, but one of the benefits of the multi-coil and the LGR machines is that we have a wide operating range. So just because we rate them at 8060 does not mean it's the only condition at which they work. Uh, the five series spans from 105 pints all the way up to 335 pints now. Uh, and then the six series goes from our 500 pint machine up to our 900 pints. Uh, and and uh, then we have some portables in there. Um, but uh, for the most part, we are going from 70 pints per day uh, up to nearly 1,000 pints per day with our refrigerant-based dehumidifiers. And that's something that, uh, you know, in, in the line of dehumidification uh, sales that we're always looking at, a lot of times we see foreign competitors um, uh, manufacture equipment and then label it, but they test at like crazy saturation conditions, like 86 degrees or and, and 80 percent humidity, sure. um, and in those types of conditions, really, our 300 pint dehumidifier would be a 600 pint dehumidifier. That's right. So that uh, that that testing standard was really important historically, so that uh, it protect the consumer, so that when they went in to go buy a dehumidifier they knew that, that everybody was playing on the same playing field as far as the condition the equipment was tested at. Certainly, uh, and you know, that's, uh, it, it's, that process is called derating, uh, where your nominal uh, or normal uh, capacity, which we call our naming convention, so the 506, for instance, pulls 506 pints per day at 8060. To derate that to, say, 7550 or 7050, there's a different capacity for that. But if we were to rate that at uh, you know, 90, 90, which would be near saturation, uh, the 506 would be pulling somewhere around 750 pints per day. But it would be misleading for us to call that the 750. Uh, but although many of the competitors and, and uh, people entering the industry do just that. So the counterpoint to that conversation ends up being the deration below 80 degrees and 60% relative humidity. Um, I know some competitors have tried to uh, tried to pick on us about that, and we've showed it over and over again that it's just not true that the rate at which capacity drops off is not a uh, quest versus the competitor type of problem. It is a, this happens with all refrigerant dehumidifiers. Um, it's one of the thing that, uh, that as you speak to your regional salespeople, that um, as we find uh, very cold or very dry conditions, we will put forward calculations to make sure that you've got the right fit for something like a, uh, a drying room condition where you might be running 60 degrees and 60% relative humidity to make sure that you've got the, uh, the correct size equipment for that application.